my lovely viewers, and welcome. I am Kira, a romantic ace, and tonight we are streaming chapter 10 of Endless Summer, book three. So, with that, the stinger for chapter 10 is, you've returned to Elastel on the eve of a very special occasion. Are you ready to be handfasted with the one you love? Let's find out! This is Act 8, Chapter 10. I was lost until you found me. Ah. So we're back at Elastel! Somehow, we ran through a volcano, and now we're here. You and your friends trudge through the rainforest toward Elastel. The tree city rises as a glittering silhouette in the light of the full moon. Mm. Flower garlands line every platform and bridge, heralding the hand-fasting holiday of Niala Ray. Whoa, this makes the Riverside Mall at Christmas look like a bomb shelter. I mean, it's a lot more organic than the Riverside Mall at Christmas probably is, so... yeah. Plus, there's a good chance the Riverside Mall was built during the Cold War. No day is more sacred to us than Niala Ray. You notice Alistair straggling behind. Good. He's clearly still reeling from the confrontation with Rourke. Who... Oh. Yeah, it makes no sense. Oh, I'm coming. Sorry. Yeah, you yeah. Alistair, we can say, how are you holding up? Or, is what Rourke said true? Uh, okay, well, first of all, I feel like that's a little bit judgy because, honest to God, why would he know? So take a drink. What Game Kira would do, honest to God, is ask Alistair. How are you holding up? Alistair shakes his head despairingly. As well as a person of my manufacture can be, I suppose. We're here for you, okay? Just let us know what you need. See, that's good. This is a good way to handle it. She is being the therapist, by the way. So take another drink. Oh, sure. I got a- Oh shit, that's right, I'm friends with him again. Alright. Got a point with Alistair. I will. Oh, okay. You- you sit there and be mopey, buddy. You- you do that. What's important is that you know no one here is gonna see you any differently. We already hated you. This was not the final straw. Sean was gung-ho on the Redeem Alistair train from the get-go. Sean, honey, no. No. White boy doesn't need your help. Thank you, everyone. Uh, not to interrupt, but did we get the island's heart where it needed to go? I think it's with the rest of Vanu now. The presence feels more complete. Yeah, just in time for Tantrum of the Opera to swoop in and make off with our magic chandelier. <sighs> Jake. Why? Why? Yeah, but he won't be able to do anything with it. There's still a piece missing. Estella stops in place peering toward a thicket up ahead. Watch yourselves. We are not alone. You hear movement in the trees, and a massive beast springs out onto the trail, in the middle of very happy music. Sabertooth snarl that I can't really do. I'm sorry that I tried. 
call my friend. Little Tari is perched on the mighty Sabretooth's back, clinging to his fur. Yay, we get to see Tari again. Yes, 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 yes. Uh And the Catalysts! Yay! This child. <laughs> hey, little blueberry. How you been? Tari looks at your group and then at Elastel. You're all coming home too? No. It's so cute. It's so cute. I'm so happy. <laughs> Looks that way. <gasps> Yay! Race you there! Oh, that is not fair. You have a whole entire saber tooth, child. Happy saber tooth tiger sound. The Sabretooth and Tari take off down the Rainforest Trail. Uh, was that? Oh yeah, Mike, by the way, honey, there's like dinosaurs and Sabretooth tigers and shit around here. Sorry, buddy. It's okay, you'll catch up. A little boy on a Sabretooth tiger. I saw it too, you're not crazy. Mike and Kelly both, man. <laughs> they got some they got some adjusting to do. A little while later, you're gathered in Elastel's audience hall with Seraxa. She reverently lowers Varen's crown onto his head and drops to one knee. We are grateful to see your return, my Elishar. Rise, Seraxa. Something troubles you? <sighs> Ron Musti has brought destruction upon the island, and our people worry for their future. There are many who feel we should postpone the Alibay until the crisis has ended. No, 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 no. This is the time when you need to have happy celebrations. Why do you think I'm so excited about this episode? Because we need this. This is- we are way overdue for just some levity and relief, y'all. Way overdue. Half a book overdue. Oh no! Really? Well, surely everyone needs a reason to celebrate now more than ever. Woman has a point. Perhaps. The village will expect an announcement on the matter. What would you have me tell them, Elishar? Varen furrows his brow. I... Uh, I'm not sure. I literally just got back and this was not on my mind. I was running through a volcano. In fairness. Tell them we can say some choices must last, or a better future starts today. Hmm. I don't know, I'm with Michelle here. Like, people need a reason to celebrate, so I think I'm gonna go with the one that obviously steers us toward that. Tell them a better future starts today. Assuming it actually will be a better future for them. I mean, yes, but shush, Zara. <laughs> Happy thoughts, woman. Happy thoughts. Every day brings new challenges. If you go in believing things will get better, they will. Uh, not always, but it can help. <laughs> That's just science. Oh, I'm not sure it is at all, but okay. I didn't get that far in psychology, but I'm not sure that's how psychology works. 
Please tell the people what Kira has suggested, Siraxa. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, you're not gonna edit that at all? You're just gonna- You're gonna literally let me put words in the Elishar's mouth. I don't think that's a good idea at all. That's a terrible idea. Varen! Varen, you're, you're supposed to, like, make your own fucking choices here. What the hell? Ah! Oh, dear. And let them know that we must make this Niala Ray the greatest Elistel has ever seen. Okay. It shall be done, my Elishar. Sir Hexa looks like so devious here, oh my god. Everyone finds their way to sleeping quarters among the branches of the great tree. You awake early and step out into the flower-strewn catwalks of Elastel. Your friends emerge from various huts, stretching groggily. As the morning sun streams through the branches, you take in the Niala Ray decorations together. Oh, wow! It's so beautiful! It's so good, I love it! Vanti couples stand hand in hand across the city's many platforms. Some of them wear a tropical flower tucked behind one ear. Oh my gosh, I don't think we've seen a Vanti woman apart from, like, Saraxa and, um, Zimedra without her mask. Interesting. Looks like a chrysanthemum behind her ear. Varin emerges on a high balcony to address the crowd. My beloved people of Elistel. It is said that in each of us, there is a seed that waits for the nourishing presence of the one for whom we are destined. Oh, I got some things to say about that. Um, maybe we don't place utmost importance on romantic relationships, please? Because that then demeans those of us who don't feel that type of attraction and or just don't want that type of relationship into feeling like we're less of people because we don't experience that. So maybe we don't say that. Maybe, mm, maybe we don't say that. If you have found that one, join hands with them now to signify the beginning of your journey together. <laughs> so cute, look at him. Jake walks over to you, beaming a wide smile. It's so Hey, princess, what do you say you and I go make ourselves into an us? Mm, you could use my name, though. You place your hand in his. After all, he already proposed. I'd say yes, and it's about time. It's been almost an entire month. We're totally ready for this. Your friends begin to applaud and cheer. Raj runs around high-fiving everyone. Yeah! Oh my god, he's so happy! <gasps> this is just... I can't believe my best friend's getting... <gasps> oh, Kira, I'm so happy! Yo, but he didn't... Diego, you're so sad! No! Who <laughs> would have thought? Grats, Kira. Oh, they're so amazing together. Yeah, we are better than you and Alistair, okay? This is a way healthier relationship than you and Alistair, I'm just saying. Jake is a better person. He just is. Mike smiles and places a hand on Jake's shoulder. Oh, oh my god, Mike gets to be best man. Oh my heart again. Hmm. <laughs> Proud of you, Grandpa. Varen crosses a catwalk toward you. An exquisite silken garment is draped across his arms. Congratulations, Kira. 
I had a feeling you might need this. Wow. Varen just, he, oh, he saw this coming five miles away, y'all. He's just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Diego's a little snitch is what he is. Michelle pushes Raj out of the way to get a closer look. Michelle has priorities. Everyone else needs to move. There is a pretty dress involved. <sighs> that fabric is lighter than air. And the color. It is a gown my mother wore during her hand fasting to my father. Oh, oh it's his mother's wedding dress, y'all. He's letting us wear his mom's wedding dress. It is a gown my mother wore during her hand fasting to my father. Made from the finest silk and jewelry we Vonti can produce. How do we produce silk on a tropical island where silkworms probably don't exist? Who knows? Oh my god, Kira, we've got to see how it looks on you. So the handfast regalia, the perfect look for your special day. Also known as something else I'll be trying to make in The Sims. Um, costs me nothing to choose this look. I love it! Thank you so much, Farron. <laughs> the best thing ever just got even better. Diego's so excited. Diego! It's your day two, isn't it? Isn't it? And that is how to look like a goddess on your wedding day. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Furball sits down at your feet, gazing up at you in wonder. Ooh. Baby! <laughs> Gonna be hard for me to concentrate with you looking like that. Alright, I think that counts as some swooning. Take a drink. Varen turns to Jake. Seraxa has special attire for you as well. Oh boy. Oh boy. So, oh, imagine. Imagine what's going through Seraxa's head right now. She's like, Jesus Christ, I have to dress this stupid motherfucker. I told you I cuss. Like, these people don't even know what to wear to a wedding. Oh my god. <laughs> This is gonna be great. This is gonna be a good time, and then we can give him shit for looking too good. I hope. And maybe to call him Top Gun just once for parody? Come on now. Uh, thanks, but I've got something I can put on. No, no, no! No, 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 no! No, no, let Seraxa dress you up, fool! I'm a I've already done the thing, you need to do the thing. Do as the locals do, sir. I wanna see this. Varen's gaze passes to Diego. He walks toward him through the falling petals and extends his hand. Aww. Hmm? Are we going somewhere? <laughs> you're going to the chapel and you're gonna get married. I have been waiting, what, 40 minutes now to bust that out. Yes. Yes, 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 <laughs> Okay. <gasps> Diego. <gasps> Diego Ricardo Ortiz Soto. I have something I wish to ask you. Oh, I bet you do. Diego gasps and brings both hands to his mouth, trying to keep from sobbing. Baby, yes! Yes, 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 yes! 
<laughs> yes? Baby. I knew from the very first moment I saw you that I wanted to be with you. You know, when I was trying to kidnap your friends and you. I knew then. I love you, Diego. I want to be with you always. You're his person. You're his person, Diego. Would you like to bring joy to my people and to each other for the rest of our lives? Ah! It's adorable. I don't know how he's going to explain this when he gets off the island. I, oh my God, Diego, yay, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 just say yes. Uh, Varen, just a second, okay? Oh, oh, baby, I know, it's fast. Varen nods and lowers his hand. Diego comes running over to you. No, baby, you're a grown-ass adult. You can make your own choices, and the choice is yes. Kira? Oh, God, I just... Should I say yes? You tell me. Diego, we can say, what does your head say? Or what does your heart say? I don't think Diego's very logically motivated. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. This boy has, trying to get a, has been trying to get somebody in our pants since we landed on this island. I think he's motivated by his heart. So Diego, what does your heart say? Like, yes, screamed from the top of a mountain? Okay, then go! Go! Why are you asking me for permission? You don't need my permission. Go! What? Then go let him hear your voice! Diego turns toward Varen and runs into his arms. Ah! Varen, all my yes and then some. Varen hoists him into the air joyfully. Everybody's so happy. I love it. I love it. I, I just, it makes me just <clears throat> happy feelings. Happy. There's not enough of them right now. Happy feelings. I guess I felt it from day one, too. You had me at hello. Did he, though? Are, are we literally forgetting how we met Varen? Because, like, he kidnapped you. I'm just saying. He kidnapped you. <laughs> Varen and Diego kiss while your friends cheer. Aww. Everyone's so happy. See, look, Grace even says it. Thank you. Oh, Diego, I'm so happy! <laughs> you two are great together. Glad it's finally official. <gasps> there you go forever! Oh my god, they have a ship name. I love it. I love it! <laughs> Varen lovingly strokes Diego's face, then turns to address the crowd from the central platform. This entire crowd has just watched their Elishar get engaged, like, right in front of them. This is adorable. This is adorable. Beloved people of Elistel, the Great Hall stands open for our ceremonies. Let Niala Ray commence! Yay! Everybody cheers. It's great. Cheers and ululations of joy go up throughout the tree. Among your friends, hugs are exchanged and tears brushed from cheeks. Gradually, everyone begins to split off to get ready. Ah, it's so cute. Uh, I guess I'll see you soon. And I love you, Kira. Finally! Finally he uses our fucking name. Thank you. Thank you. I love you too, Jake. See, we should have called him Top Gun right here just to stick it to him. That's what we should have done. 
Raj follows you back to the huts, scooping up a few treats along the First things first, you gotta decide who's gonna be your maid of honor. Like, why can't I have a man of honor? I guess Diego's occupied, isn't he? I guess it's hard to have your man of honor getting married at the same time. Uh-oh. I have to choose between them? Technically, the answer to this is no. We're a catalyst. We can do whatever the fuck we want. But... Yep. There can only be one. Don't worry. The other ladies won't hate you forever. Probably. Maybe. So who will be maid of honor? We've got choices. So we've got Quinn. We've got Grace. We've got Zara. Michelle. Or Estella. Um. Hmm. And like, I kind of lean toward Michelle. Um. Just because all the way back in book two when, you know, we were all calling home and she said there's no one you know there's no one left that I love essentially you know she didn't have anybody at home to call so like I'm tempted to do Michelle just because of that just to be like yeah like you definitely belong here etc mm. no I'm going with my gut Michelle it's Michelle makes sense best person for the job okay now the most important decision. What kind of meal do you want to have after the ceremony? Hmm. Why don't you pick something and surprise me? Perfect. Aw, oh, yeah! I know just the thing! And I'll let your maid of honor know she's up. Eee. It's just a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. As Raj jogs toward the kitchens, Zara approaches you. Hey, Kira, I know you're busy with hand fasting stuff, but I got something you'll want to see. She leads you to a table where Craig is perplexedly leafing through a leather-bound book. Just stop tacking L-Y onto the end of really long words to make it an adverb. Come on. This is just full of weird-ass writing. The hell you get this from, Z? Beneath the volcano, it's the Endlesses. You glimpse a page bearing handwritten numbers. Hmm. Is it some kind of notebook? <laughs> Unless she was secretly a computer, I don't see what the point is. It's a code, doofus. And since the Endless is technically the same person as Kira, maybe she can decipher it. Oh, I don't know about that. Okay, um, hmm. Zara hands the book to you. We shall peruse it, I guess. 705 246 Three, eight, one. Oh, this, this is quick. They, oh, they did this nicely, too. Uh, huh. Looks like a math problem? Not, not really. It's just a code. Yeah, where's Grace at? Oh, yeah, Grace would... She wouldn't even have to look at this. She'd probably just... <laughs> Grace, from the background, the answer is 12 without looking at it. Probably off awkwardly necking with Alistair. Got any ideas on how to solve it? Twelve. No matter which way you add up the numbers, that's what it equals. Out of curiosity, you turn to the twelfth page of the notebook. Aha! So it is our clue. Five out of six. The crystal is clearly sentient. It seems to have drawn four formidable creatures through time in order to establish order on the island. Sadly, the beasts were driven mad, or perhaps imbued with the crystal's own suffering. 
If the latter is true, did it in fact create them? Life born out of millennia of yearning and limitless energy. Hmm. I'd say you cracked it. Guess I'll see you two at the ceremony. Michelle hurries across a catwalk towards you. Kira! I'm so happy to be your maid of honor. <laughs> of course, Michelle. They're waiting for us in the audience hall. Ready to make your entrance? You take a deep breath and collect yourself, checking your reflection in a glass lantern. <sighs> Never been more ready. I didn't have to put on makeup or anything. This, this is shaping up to be a better and better wedding the more I think about it. This is fantastic. I love it. Hundreds of candles glimmer along the walls of the audience hall, shedding a warm glow onto the faces of your friends. You exhale slowly to calm your nerves and enter. Here we go. You've barely made it through the door when Furball comes skittering up to you. He offers you a bundle of delicate flowers held in his mouth. Furball is our flower fox. Oh my god! This is adorable! Herp. Baby! Let's see. Look at the happy boy. Look at him, he's so cute. We shall take the flowers. <sighs> Thanks, little guy. You grasp it and give the back of his head a ruffle. Look at the smile. Look at the little smile. Oh my goodness. Oh, he's so cute. Furball heads back towards your friends, who stand on either side of an aisle leading to the central dais. As you proceed to the dais, everyone begins to turn in your direction. Here she comes! Tari. Upon seeing you, Quinn sighs happily and brings a hand to her heart, overjoyed. Mm. Look, look at the smile! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh yeah, Yvonne's here! Okay, yeah! <sighs> Magnifique! Indeed. Sean's eyes are watery. He beams a proud smile at you. Why are you proud, Sean? What did you do to engineer this? This is all Diego. This is 100% Diego's fault. He's so happy, though. Everyone's so happy. Estella simply nods her affection for you glowing in her dark eyes. <laughs> Estella's like, I don't smile, but I'm just saying I'm smiling on the inside. <laughs> Ahead, you catch sight of Jake waiting for you at the dais. A ribbon is draped across his hands. Aww. Oh my God. <laughs> and it's falling in the shape of a heart. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's cute. And like a little crooked smile and everything. They did a good job, but why are his eyes a different color? His eyes should still be blue, even in dark light. You arrive beside him and hand your bouquet to Michelle. She smiles at you and takes her seat. Jake gazes at you and shakes his head in disbelief. Yeah, that's right. You don't actually deserve me either, but here we are. 
Oh, this did it, huh? Romance up. Jake is now soulmates with you. This is very appropriate. This is very appropriate. I like it. Kara, you're taking my breath away over here. Hey, finally, he uses our name. Oh, <laughs> believe me, it's mutual. Saraxa walks to the top of the dais to conduct the ceremony. Jake and Kira, please join hands. Your hands find each other, at least it's not our faces, and clasp. No, I'm never letting that go ever again. Saraxa tucks the ribbon and carefully tucks one end between your fingers. She then wraps it several times around both of your hands. Cool, we're gonna have to figure out how to get out of this later. She's tying a Gordian knot over here. These are the hands of your betrothed. Together, these hands planted the seed of your love. Sure, that's what we're calling what happened in book one, love. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now that, that was all lust, sweetheart. This, this whole thing grew out of sex. <laughs> These are the hands of your partner. One who will remain beside you as you grow and change. They will wipe tears of sorrow and joy from your eyes. Oh, this is sweet though. This ribbon represents the roots between you. A foundation of trust that will deepen, preserving you through storms to come. Across the audience hall, you see Varen and Diego being joined together by another officiant. I already like this like a hundred times better than the like Christian-centric ceremonies I've been to. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. Diego looks over at you. You smile at each other wordlessly as grateful tears form in his eyes. Oh, baby. Baby. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him with a smile. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this hand fasting is a commitment to one another for a year and a day. And if you are still in love after that time, forever. Saraxa places her hand atop yours and Jake's. She then steps back. You may speak your vows to each other. Jake, we can say, I will always be honest with you. I will nurture your dreams. Or... I'll go wherever you lead us. Yeah, we ain't doing that one. Okay, this this boy... This boy is too switchy for that, first of all. Second of all, no, I don't just blindly follow where anybody goes. If anything, y'all have been following me this whole time, and I still don't understand why that is. So no, that's not an option. So we're between, I will always be honest with you, or I will nurture your dreams. Hmm. Hmm. Because, like, I will always be honest with you, but will we, though? Because, like, yeah, small things. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> or I will nurture your dreams, which sounds really cheesy. I'm not gonna lie. It sounds really cheesy. But, like, I actually feel like that's maybe the healthier one. Honesty or dreams. Hmm. Because, like, nurture your dreams doesn't mean you just follow them blindly. You just, like, encourage somebody to have dreams. And, like, that doesn't mean you have to follow through with every ridiculous thing they come up with. But, yeah, I think I'm going with that. Jake, I will nurture your dreams. As your betrothed watches you adoringly, you're suddenly overcome with emotion. Oh no. Yo! 
all gonna make me cry. I've been doing so well. I love you so much. I just want the world for you. Your success is my success. While you climb each mountain, I'll be there to cheer you on and to catch you if you ever fall. Oh, hey, hey, there's gonna be reciprocity here, right? We're not just his little housewife now, right? Right? In the audience, Michelle reaches out for Sean's hand. He grips it tightly and she rests her head on his shoulder. <laughs> My machinations are working. Ha <laughs> Uh, think you really have made an honest man out of me, Kira. Hmm, have we now? I wanted this, but it wasn't until a little while ago that I realized how much I needed it, too. Being with you is everything to me. I'm not half the man a true princess deserves, but I'm gonna give it all I got and then some. Aww. See, that's actually kind of nice. He's gonna try. Boy's gonna try. <laughs> With a little luck, maybe we can land this thing somewhere near happily ever after. It's so cute, though. It's so sweet. Tari slowly climbs the dais, carrying a large, broad leaf. Breathtaking flowers are laid out across its surface. <laughs> hmm, okay. Kira. Please select the blossom that best represents how you feel for Jake. It will become an expression of your love for all to see. Oh, I see. This is replacing the ring ceremony. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. So, so Furball was our flower fox, and Tari is our blossom bearer. I don't know if they planned the alliteration, but this worked out really well. I am pleased. She points to each radiant blossom, or bloom, describing its meaning. Unity, harmony, and devotion. So, okay, so we're just gonna, we're gonna scroll through and look at them all. Devotion, I'm yours now and forever, is like this purple chrysanthemum. We've got Harmony, which looks like a laurel leaf crown. Everything's better with you. Or Unity, a uh, pink plumeria. It was meant to be. They're all kind of sweet, but... I mean... Gotta do what we gotta do. What lovebirds are gonna do what lovebirds are gonna do, as Kellis says. Devotion. I'm yours, now and forever. Okay. And now, let the union between these two be made complete with a kiss. Oh, I think that was kissing as an option. I don't think it was actually an option. I think we were, we were just gonna kiss no matter what, but it's close enough. Kissing as an option, take a drink. Tari gasps and closes his eyes. Avert your eyes, Tari. Jake is not a sweet kisser. Jake just goes for it. I can't look, I can't look! <laughs> it's so cute! See? I told you. You and Jake come together as if by an invisible, irresistible force. He wraps his free arm around your waist. Oh, that's right, we're still tied together. <laughs> <clears throat> you 
and Jake come together as if by an invisible, irresistible force. He wraps his free arm around your waist, pure joy dancing in his eyes. Everybody's so happy. Look at, look at this. Look at, oh, and there's a, there's the flower on the end. Okay, I, I wonder if that stays. I forget if that stays or if that's just for this chapter. Yeah, smile though. Yeah. Yeah, we're pretty happy too. As one, your lips meet. Our faces didn't have to find each other, they were already there. You cut the side of his face, burying your fingers in his hair as the two of you kiss like never before. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a good thing Tari's not looking. Your friends begin applauding. The sound abrupt abruptly returns you to reality. Yes, you have an audience. Hands need to stay out of certain places yet. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I get it, Kira. Yes! <laughs> oh my god, Zara. I love it. I love it. This is great. This is great. Their love is so perfect. <laughs> oh my god. Yo, Grace, it's okay. You will find a better man. I kill it. Get your eyes off of Quinn. There's a gorgeous gal right over here. These two are now joined before Vanu and the Vanti. Just as it was for the first bride and her beloved. Hmm... True love is an, is an inexorable force. Aha! Another clue is the clothing, closing words, so that is the final clue of Act 8. No land, sea, or person may keep those who are destined apart. Hmm. Sounds familiar. Go forth as one, children of the stars. Eee! You leave the dais together, and the crowd follows you toward the exit. Sean offers a congratulatory handshake. You two looked amazing up there, Kira. Vanti begin tossing handfuls of petals into the air as you exit the audience hall. It becomes a cloud of roiling color around the two of you. Uh, zero visibility. Requesting coordinates from ground control. Someone help, we're gonna walk off a catwalk. <laughs> They've got railings, right? We're not gonna just plummet to our deaths. It'll be fine. You gently lead Jake out of the pedals by your hand fasting bond. I'm gonna guess this is like left to right. Because otherwise, yeah, this is complicated. He chuckles and the two of you kiss again undoing the symbolic ribbon. Hmm. So you two are hand-fasted now, huh? Looks like fun. The clockmaker asked me to bring you a gift. Your partner already knows about it. Hmm. Got a little something set up for you, Kira. I can't begin to explain to you how relieved I am that he's using our name now. I like the sound of this so far. The anachronist produces an elaborate timepiece and begins making adjustments. You are suddenly propelled through time and space! Hmm. This sounds unsafe. You find yourself tumbling onto the deck of the Dorado. Hmm. Yeah. Jake swoops in to catch you, twirling you off the floorboards and into his arms. My god, he is being so dramatic. This is so cute. Oh, sweeping me off my feet? That's what I do. I'm not sure that's what you do at all, Jake, but okay. He gently sets you down again. 
keeping an arm looped around your waist. <sighs> I still can't believe we made it. We're actually here. We're actually together. I mean, you've been together all this time. This was literally just a formality, but okay. And we're actually alone. Uh-oh. Jake's eyes shine in the warm golden sunlight. Oh, were they finally blue again? So we can say, so what did you want to show me? Or where are Yvonne and Malatesta? Well, I think we know where Yvonne and Malatesta are back at the party. The question is, do they know they should not come back? Uh, I'm gonna guess as much. Um, so we're, we're, we're gonna play a little coy. So, what did you want to show me? Hmm, somebody's eager. What? What did you want to show me, Jake? <laughs> Surprises make me nervous. Lately, they tend to involve robots. Or ghosts. Or time travelers who turn out to be me. <laughs> I feel like... I feel like this is a little bit of genre savvy over here. Take a drink. You'll like this one. Promise. Now, come on. We're gonna have to do some serious sailing to get there by sunset. Oh boy. Do we actually know how to sail? Does Jake know how to sail? They do not necessarily teach you how to sail pirate schooners in the Navy these days. Especially in the pilot training program. This boy was spending too much time getting a four-year degree. He he was not learning how to sail pirate ships. Oh? What happens at sunset? The wind dies down and you're gonna have a hard time getting back? <laughs> huh, wouldn't you like to know? Wow. Wow. Y'all. Jake winks and clambers up into the rigging, calling down from above. Hmm, looks like the peg leg pals already did most of the work for us, but this is still gonna be a little tricky. So we can say, we can do this together, or just remember who the captain is. Oh... I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna push back a little bit. I'm gonna tease. Just remember who the captain is. Now get to work, or I'll throw you in the brig. Mmm, I think he might like that though. <laughs> oh yeah. And then what? Well then I'm gonna tie you up. Except we're gonna talk to you about it first. And we're gonna do it with something safer than a belt and a tie. And uh We'll see what happens after that. Hmm. Well, there's something with ropes and chains. Wow. She... Straight to the point. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm feeling so disobedient all of a sudden. Wow, he's a brat to boot. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I think we've just set ourselves up as a brat tamer. To nobody's surprise, because that is very obviously what Jake is, anyway. He's a switchy little brat, is what he is. Over the next hour, you bustle around the deck while Jake climbs and swings above you, disappearing periodically. To where? <laughs> there should be a pretty clear line of sight to all places on the exterior of the boat. Where is he going? Jake takes his place at the helm while you catch your breath on the deck. We've been doing this all in a wedding dress. A vintage wedding dress, mind you. Jake winks down- or Jake winks at you as the sun beats down. He wipes an arm across his brow. We are all gonna die at like 45 from melanoma. Ugh. Cause now we're out on the water and all that light is getting polarized as it reflects off. And we're not wearing sunscreen. Hmm. Getting a little warm out here. You should, we can say, grab a drink or take your shirt off. Wow. 
I mean, frankly, he's still doing this all in, like, a tuxedo vest and a collared shirt. I find that difficult to believe. I find that very difficult to believe. Um, but he should also drink. Hydration is good. You, you should grab a drink. Mmm, I like the way you think. Jake searches around the helm. He lifts a bottle of wine into view with a triumphant grin. Hmm. Hmm, pirates. Gotta love them. Wine instead of rum? Also, this is not what you need. Alcohol dehydrates. Oh, I was expecting rum. And there's the genre savvy. Take another drink. <clears throat> One's French, the other's got expensive taste. Okay, boy has a point. So, where are we headed? I think we can safely assume, by the way, that Jake is in fact drinking, so take another drink. Little Islet I spotted off the coast the other day. Matter of fact, why don't you get up to the crow's nest and keep an eye out for me? Oh, you just want to look up our skirt while we climb the rope. That's what you want. <laughs> I feel like I'm being handled. Huh, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Mmm, don't you, you little brat. <laughs> Please. Uh-huh. Shaking your head, you plant your foot in a nearby net and climb toward the crow's nest. This is ridiculous in this dress. I've gotta, like, hike this thing up so we don't step on it. Where you find a blanket laid out with a makeshift picnic. Ah, It's cute. Jake, how did you... Oh, very sneakily, of course. Suddenly behind you, because he can climb a lot faster in dress pants than we can in a gown, Jake climbs over the rail to join you in the crow's nest. It's not much, but it was the best I could find on short notice. Did I do good? our approval. Oh, it's cute. It's cute! <sighs> you did very good. But... We can say, where'd you get all this? From Elastel and or the hold? I don't know. Or, shouldn't you be steering? No, I'm more concerned about the second one. Shouldn't you be steering? We're all right for a while. The current will take care of us, and it's mostly a straight shot from here anyway. Okay, but that's the thing. How does the boat know to stay straight, Jake? That's what I'm asking you. Jake settles into the crow's nest opposite you, laying on his side beside a tableau of fruit, crab legs, and other foods. I don't know what to eat first. It all looks so good. Yes, because we've been working, and we're tired, and we're hungry, and everything is going to taste good now. Jake picks up a mango, pressing his thumbnail through the peel, which is harder than it sounds, and pulling it apart in his hands. Mmm, mangoes. Mangoes are good. He sinks his teeth into the mango's soft flesh. <laughs> oh my god! So... <laughs> So that's why they picked the word flesh. So he can say, wanna do that to me? Wow. Wow. I feel like that's kissing as an option, but that's kind of a bit more than kissing. But take a drink anyway. <laughs> or <laughs> how about sharing that? No, I, I want some mango, goddammit. Don't be biting me. Be 
biting me? Do you understand how easy it is to transmit diseases that way? How about sharing that? Jake lifts the other half of the mango to your lips. As you take a bite, he slides his thumb along your bottom lip. Mmm, he's being cute again. Mm-hmm. You're beautiful. You know that? I mean, yeah, that I could hear it again. Hmm, you're not so bad yourself. Suddenly, Jake's eyes light up. You follow his gaze to something behind you. As the ship rounds the southern coast of La Huerta, a small islet comes into view. A plateau covered with soft green grass rises from sloping cliffs. <sighs> there it is. There... what is? All I see is an empty island. Oh? Try again, and this time it'll help. Jake slides in next to you, his fingertips tracing imaginary shapes over the empty islet. Oh, uh, oh, he's got he's got ambitious plans, is what I'm hearing. Right there is our house. See the chimney smoking? The little shutters on the windows? Because we don't have glass panes, so we gotta have shutters. <laughs> Oh, I get it now. You're doing a thing. Jake winks sidelong at you. His left hand slides up your back as his right glides out over the untouched beach. Down there's the fire pit. Took the two of us almost a month to gather seashells for the path. But it sure does sparkle this time of night. Oh, it's so cute. Mmm, sounds nice. Jake's eyes sparkle in the gathering dusk. Jake, we can say, kiss me already. Uh, kissing is definitely an option that time, so take another drink. Or, you really want to stay on La Huerta? Okay, like, we say this like it's a surprise, but the truth is... Jake is still a wanted war criminal. So until such time as his, uh, his Ember of Hope actually comes true, La Huerta is probably the safest place for him. Like, because Lundgren's not exactly just gonna fess up. And Mike's testimony by itself isn't gonna be enough. Fiddler's dead, Tetra's dead. So yeah, Jake's kind of screwed. La Huerta is the best place for him. Um, so yeah, I'm not really going to ask that because of course he wants to stay on La Huerta. Um, so I guess that leaves us with the kissing scene. Jake, kiss me already. Mm-hmm, <laughs> thought you'd never ask. Jake lifts- yup, there it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Jake lifts his mouth to yours. Your faces find each other again. <laughs> the scent of the sea mingles with the taste of his lips. All mango-y. You drive me crazy, you know that? In a good way or a bad way? Well, he drives me crazy in the bad way, so I'm gonna guess for balance's sake we drive him crazy in the good way. <laughs> oh, okay, that's our answer. He buries his face in your neck. Mm-hmm, <laughs> very, very bad. Are we gonna have to get those chains out, boy? I think we are. You laugh with surprise as he nips behind your ear with his teeth. Hey, slow down. What the hell? Oh, I, I guess we could actually. So we can say save some for later. 
or don't stop. I've explained before that Jake uses sex to deal with stressful situations. I would call finding out that evil Tony Stark now has an almost unlimited source of power in his hands pretty stressful. There is a pretty strong need for an endorphin rush right now. Practicality. Don't stop. And get these damn clothes off. Oh, wow, okay. We're... All right. Whose damn clothes? Yours or his? Hmm, <laughs> don't gotta tell me twice. I feel like we did. <laughs> As the stars come out, you and Jake make your way down from the crow's nest. You notice your cast-off clothing tangled on the rigging and begin dragging it down. Yeah, it's a good thing we didn't lose Baron's mother's dress. Oh, found your pants over here. Wow. I'll trade you for one of your socks. Chilly now. Yeah, we should have put on our dress. Yeah, and I could use a drink. A little rum would fix things. And I think I know just where to find some. You descend to the captain's cabin. Oh boy. Oh, do Yvonne and Malatesta know what's going down right now? I'm gonna guess they do, but... That almost makes it worse. Jake rummages through a cabinet crammed with rolled up maps and loose parchment, eventually producing a bottle. Bingo. Everyone knows pirates can't do paperwork without booze. Does everyone know that, Jake? I feel like not everyone knows that. The paperwork part, I mean. Jake scrounges up a pair of glasses and pours out two drinks. Ain't the kind of thing you'd normally catch me saying, but it was a beautiful ceremony. Hmm, married life making you soft already? No, 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 don't tease him. Enough with the toxic masculinity, please. He chuckles and sets the rum bottle down with a wistful sigh. Shame Rebecca and my folks couldn't have seen it. They're about the only people I would have invited. Well, at least Mike was here. I would have invited Mike. Jake shakes his head as if clearing away dark thoughts. <sighs> How about you? Anybody you wish had been there today? Me? Uh... We can say my parents, I guess? <laughs> wow, we clearly have a loving relationship with our family. Or, I don't know. I mean, it's been a long time since we've mentioned our life off the island, so I'm gonna go with my parents, I guess? Jake seems to sense the uncertainty in your voice, or he just has ears. He frowns. I don't know, I... I don't really remember much from before we landed here. That's because this island screws with time, and also it's 2017. Literally, time has just slowed to a crawl. Yeah, I know what you mean. It all feels like a lifetime ago. That's not quite it. I mean, I barely remember anything. It's like my past is there, but for some reason I can't get to it. Ooh. Oof. That sucks. An idea too large to grasp looms at the edge of your mind. Until Jake speaks. Speaking of that, how do you want to spend the first night of the rest of your life? That's every night, dude. 
So we can say, finishing that bottle. Oh, oh, a whole bottle of ramen a night? Oh, I don't know. Ooh. Oh, that's alcohol poisoning waiting to happen. Um, curled up in that bed. Or, on top of that desk. No, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go with curled up in that bed. <laughs> that's my favorite thing. He likes snuggles. It's cute. Hmm. Sleeping? Oh, I don't think that's what he means. Yeah. Lying in bed naked with you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I figured. You and Jake settle in together, trading kisses and whispering sweet nothings. Oh, that's cute. Until the waves rock you both to sleep. Aww. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's cute. In the morning, the two of you enter the time rift and arrive at a grassy hill outside of Elistel. You notice Michelle standing up by herself and gazing out at the sea. Oh yeah. Poor... Poor Michelle is, is having a moment. Michelle? Everything okay? Oh, does this flower stay with us for the rest of the book? Hmm. Michelle's facade shatters. She stifles a sob and covers her face. Oh, honey. Oh. Oh, Michelle? You put your arms around her, holding her as a torrent of emotion floods forth. <laughs> I know that life's not fair, but it hurts sometimes, you know? Michelle buries her face in her hands. You notice Vanu hovering nearby, silently watching the two of you, like the stalker it is. This is its happy face. You deserve to be happy too, Michelle. Vanu floats forward, bringing you something. So, we can accept the, st the salvage stethoscope for 12 diamonds, or allow Vanu to fade. Nope, we gotta, we gotta do it. Let's do it. Come on, Michelle. Accept the salvaged stethoscope. Michelle stares at the powder blue tubing in your hands, in astonishment, I refuse to keep doing this. That's my... The moment she reaches for it, everything is swallowed by a burst of light. When the light clears, you're in a hospital room. Sean's mother is lying down and tapping a TV remote impatiently. They don't have any sports channels? I'm not about to sit here and watch a bunch of tacky gossip. Michelle walks in. Oh, wow, with the hair. Oh, I didn't expect the hair. But I like her in the, in the doctor's coat. That's awesome. Morning, Mrs. Gale. How are we doing today? She leans down and places her Tiffany Blue stethoscope over Trisha's heart. Okay, Tiffany Blue is not powder blue. Tiffany Blue is like almost a robin's egg blue. They are very different colors. <sighs> Michelle, honey, you know you can call me Trisha. And I'll be a lot better if you've got a new back for me. Oh yeah, back injuries suck. Oof. You're actually in really good shape. The x-rays show that your realignment surgery has taken nicely. One or two more days off your feet and you should be good to go. <sighs> I'm never gonna be good to go with this old spine. But I'll take it. 
As Michelle fills out her chart, Trisha gazes at her thoughtfully. You've done well for yourself here. Well, they keep me busy, that's for sure. There's a knock at the door! Take a drink! Oh wow, we haven't had that one in a long time. Also, we are being her therapist, so take two drinks. Oh, was hoping I might run into you. Hey, Sean! Playing for the Condors. Clearly the coolest team in the not-NFL. Michelle's professional demeanor softens. A smile begins to light up her face. She quickly clears her throat and tries to slip past Sean to leave. Well, why? They're friends? What the hell? Sorry, but I've got four other patients to... I know you're working hard, but maybe you could take this with you? Sean is carrying two bouquets of vibrant stargazer lilies. He holds one out to Michelle. Oh, what a good boy. What a good boy, a sweet boy. Look, look at this good boy, y'all. Sean, that's so sweet. Perched amid the flowers is a card that reads, I'm sorry. I know it's a long time coming, but he said this on La Huerta, so what the hell? I just wanted to let you know that I really messed up. And I hope someday, now that you're a successful doctor and everything, I will get the chance to truly make it up to you. Well, what does that mean? I... Michelle is surprised. I actually hate stargazers. But I suppose I can make an exception in this case. Oh, it's cute. <laughs> More than generous. It's adorable. Maybe we could talk later? My door is always open. You're suddenly returned to the hills near Elistal. Michelle is gazing at the stethoscope in wonder. I heard that the spirit could... But... Several of your friends come walking up from the beach. Yo, we heard the VIP lounge is over here. You okay, Michelle? Much better, thanks to Kira. Ah. All right. So we've collected ten of the eleven embers of hope. She gazes past you across the sun-dappled hills. The light out here really is really beautiful. I've got an idea. She pulls an old Polaroid camera from her bag. Oh, group selfie time? Group selfie time! Yes! Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Let's do it! Everybody cram in! Your friends rush behind Michelle, posing for the shot. The photo slides out of the camera and into Michelle's hand. She holds it up for everyone to see. Oh my god! Oh my god, look at everybody! Oh my god, this is so cute! Look at- oh, look at Stella! Oh my god, she's so happy! Oh my god! Look at Craig! Yes! Oh my god, they're adorable! I love them all! Michelle sets the photo on her bag, 
but it only rests a moment before the wind catches it, dragging it away. No! You try to run after it, but it's soon gone over the hills. Damn it! Let's take another! You're suddenly struck by a sobering thought. Oh no. Rourke told me he saw all of us in a photo. Brisk footsteps approach across the grass. Alistair comes running up, panting for breath. Oh, that's right! He hadn't expected Alistair. <gasps> oh no. Oh no! Alistair points to the south. The midday sky darkens impossibly toward the celestial. Above the hotel, an enormous vortex swallows all light and shape. Oh boy. It's over. We're done. His activated Project Janus. Oh boy. All right, so that is chapter 10 complete. We found both clues in the chapter and the Ember of Hope. We're still missing one. Hmm. But that is act eight complete with all six clues found, so... Congratulations. You found every clue in act eight and unlocked the full bonus scene. It's gonna be a long night, y'all. Meanwhile, somewhere along La Huerta's coastline, the Endless lies on her back in the sand, her spacesuit a tattered ruin. Time for me to go. She extinguishes the fire in her mechanical hand and stares up at the starry sky. After a few moments, she chuckles softly. Oh no, am I gonna cry? I hope I'm not gonna cry. I've done so well this entire chapter. In the end, <laughs> I couldn't even save myself. I had hoped they'd be there here when it was my time. But it's enough to know they'll be safe. Oh no, I am gonna cry. <laughs> A shooting star momentarily lights up the sky. Oh! Oh, there you are. The Endless gazes at the constellations, her eyes wide with a tender, childlike joy. I see you, Quinn. Still swimming merrily along, no matter how strong the tide that pushes against you. Oh, and there's Craig. Barreling through everything and everyone, just like a rampaging bear. I get it, it's their star signs. Zara. Off on your own again, little crow? Ah, but I know that's where you were always happiest. Just like Jake, the lone wolf we all came to love. Yeah, take a drink. <laughs> There's Alistair. That serpentine gaze never quite fit with your kind heart, did it, my friend? This is rich considering we killed him in an alternate future. Also, no. No, it absolutely does fit with his cold black heart. God, he's a terrible person. Kira, what the hell? Raj. Half man, half magic. Still living his own unique truth. And with him, Michelle, unfurling her colors for all to see. My fearless dragon, Estella. My mild and lovely Grace. My loyal Diego. And Sean, watching over them all like the proud, soaring eagle he is. Aww. Thank you, my friends, for every beautiful day. 
for all that we shared. You were worth everything and more. It's because of you that I know what love is. There, alone, but under countless stars, the endless fades away forever. <laughs> Several hours earlier, the Omega Mech descends onto the roof of the Celestial, its thrusters blasting furniture and decorations out of the way. And here we are, at the end and the beginning. Okay, dude, whatever. Iris's hologram appears next to Rourke. I have a strong, worthy daughter, and I'm all the family she has left. Ugh. An elevator opens. Lundgren steps out. Rourke locks eyes with him. See, the problem, dude, is I think Lundgren's a little too genre-savvy and he knows someone like you is never gonna actually share power. This is our time. We can't let it slip through our fingers. Yeah... I can make sure they're cut down. No one's getting up here. Oh, aren't they, though? Are you gonna get thwarted by a bunch of co-eds in the next chapter? Probably. Excellent. Iris, you may begin. Let us make man in our image and all that, yes? Rourke steps out of the mech which rises to a standing position. Blue light flares in its free hand. Oh, that's right. He's still carrying the, you know, rest of Vanu in his other hand. I was like, what the hell is in its other hand? Oh, yeah. Okay. Project Giannis initiated. Space-time disruption will commence in three, two, one... A door opens, and chaos becomes order. That's not how entropy works, but okay, dude. All right, so that is chapter 10 complete. We can restart the chapter or continue on. I will pick this back up next Friday. So, same time, same place, twitch.tv slash aromanticace if you want to watch me live. Um, and we will find out how we stop Rourke from ripping apart space-time, I guess. Um, so that'll be a good time. Um, yeah. At least we got to have the nice happy chapter before we literally ripped a hole in the world. It's cool. No, I do like this chapter. So, I'm, I'm glad that I got to play it for you. So, enjoy whatever it is you do between now and next Friday. Catch you later.